Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for standing by. Welcome to the Win the Race for Marketing Success, Five Best Practices for Modern Marketing Planning Webinar. During the presentation, all participants will be in a listen-only mode. Should you wish to ask a question during the presentation, please use the chat feature located in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. If you need to read an operator at any time, please press star zero. As a reminder, this conference is being recorded Thursday, March 5th, 2015. I would now like to turn the conference over to James Palmer. Please go ahead, sir. Great. Thanks, Teresa, and thanks, everybody, for joining us on the webinar today. Really excited to be working with, uh, with Mark Smith from Ventana Research on this webinar about winning the race for marketing success, five marketing planning best practices to achieve your objectives. And so I really wanted to, to welcome Mark. I've, I've worked with Mark for at least the past 10 years in various organizations. And one thing about Mark is he always does the research, always uses data, and always has an opinion. And, and really appreciate the work he's done uh, from an industry analyst perspective, winning, winning awards as being industry analyst of the year. And, and a person I've come to trust when we really need to dig into data and understand what's going on in the industry. So really uh, pleased to have Mark join us today. Welcome, Mark. Thanks so much, James. Great to be here. Yeah, just a reminder before we jump in, um, the couple uh, things that Teresa talked about. First, uh, if you want to ask um, uh, questions, um, the uh, chat panel is open on the left-hand side. Um, the, uh, we'll, we'll be trying to make this as interactive as possible, so make sure that you um, ask questions there. We're also uh, live tweeting this event, so if you want to have a look there, um, my, uh, hash, or the, my uh, Twitter handle, jthomas underscore 44, you see Mark's there, Mark Smith VR. And the hashtag for today's event is hashtag planning MPM, so marketing performance management uh, planning MPM. Uh, so follow us there. We're going to be live tweeting and sharing the information there as well. So uh, with that, we'll, we'll jump in and, and get started here. Uh, if you do have technical questions, please ask them on the left-hand side, and we'll do what we can do to, to uh, solve any technical issues as well. All right, so on to the uh, agenda. So Mark's done a, a lot of research into the areas of marketing planning and marketing analytics. And so today we're going to put a summary of a lot of his research together talking about five best practices in market, modern marketing planning. And then I'm going to give you a quick overview at the end about how we at Alcadia uh, take a lot of these best practices that Mark talks about and put them into play with, with Alcadia. So we're not, we're not going to do a full product overview and demonstration, but uh, throughout the webinar today you're going to learn about some of the challenges that modern marketers face in terms of marketing planning, and we want to talk a little bit how we can help. If you want to follow up afterwards and get a full demo, we can do that. So that today's uh, intention isn't to get you a full overview of Alcadia, but just show how uh, the marketing planning best practices can be achieved with, uh, with some technology. So let's jump in. I want to get, make sure this is interactive as possible. So we're going to start with a quick audience poll. And, and one of the things that we do with our customers is really understand how often they do planning. Um, so the question here is a pretty simple one. How frequently do re you revise your marketing plan? Do you do it once a year? Do you do it twice a year, every quarter, every month, weekly, daily, or whenever your CEO says you have to change your plan so uh, as needed uh, on an as-needed basis? So let's, let's make this interactive. Uh, let's uh, get you the information here uh, and, uh, and see if we can get into uh, get into some interesting uh, discussions with Mark in a second. So I'll give you a few more uh, seconds to uh, answer the questions, and then we'll, uh, we'll skip the results. So it looks like we got a pretty good percentage of people signed up now, so I'm going to just jump and skip to the results here. So it looks like from the people on the call today, um, quarterly is, is a pretty typical planning process. Um, some people are doing it, uh, you know, annually. I think the interesting one there is as needed. It's kind of the kind of seems like a, an interesting trend that marketing plans are always changing. So, so I'm going to skip to, um, to some research that Mark's done and just pop up some of his data and see how it compares. So let's have a look. Mark, you had uh, similar data, so maybe you want to talk about this and, and how frequently in, in your research, maybe talk a bit about your research report. Uh, uh, how, how often people are planning their marketing. Yeah, absolutely, James. In fact, the results from today's uh, participants uh, almost directly mirror 
um, the research that, that we conducted last year and looking at how marketing professionals and um, in fact quarterly was the highest amount in ours as well so we had 34% uh, uh, was the highest in today's participants and that as needed happens quite a bit so um, you know, it, it's consistent what we found, which is really reflective of that uh, marketing run has to be very agile. Um, there's a lot of ad hoc things that come up, and um, you have to balance different types of marketing planning. And we'll talk more about that. But you have, you know, kind of the, you know, the annual planning and updates every quarter. But then you have kind of the incremental types of uh, uh, of new objectives and uh, new requests, and so things have to be updated uh, and reflected because you know you. You can't do new marketing activities without having uh, resources and, and budget to support it. Um, so, you know, it's it's uh, you know uh, good to see that um, uh, you know companies today that are on today's webcast represent exactly what we saw uh, in our research. Yeah, that's great. So let's uh, let's jump into it, Mark. Let's talk a bit more about your research, and I'll let you take control of the slides here and walk through uh, some of the five best practices and talk a little bit about the research that you've done. We lose the sound from Mark. Oh, uh, sorry about that, uh, James. Um, thanks for the introduction, and, and really great to be here. We've obviously known each other for quite a long time, and uh, and the challenges that uh, marketeers uh, face in both leading teams uh, and also working within teams of uh, really driving success, um, because marketing is is uh, notorious for developing plans in isolation. And uh, the challenges and the pressures to really drive improvement uh, um, are, are really critical to be able to adjust. And having, having been a CMO in the past and also a VP of marketing, um, I can understand some of the pressures um, that happen uh, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. And it seems like the acceleration and pace of change is, uh, is pretty significant, um, especially as we look at all the new uh, methods for, uh, for digital marketing and areas that we have to start to think about because we have to look beyond just a bunch of, of activities and really look at the planning um, elements and how we actually can be more successful in marketing by bringing together the campaigns, the programs, tactics, and all how those all align to revenue growth. And so I'm going to talk to, uh, to you today about some of the research that we conducted last year in marketing planning, and we looked at both marketing planning and how that links to other planning in the organization. Because what marketing does has a direct impact to sales, customer service, uh, finance, um, and operations. And so it's critical that marketing takes planning um, much more seriously, I think, from a process and an application perspective. And I'm going to talk about that because it's really important that we start to uh, ensure that we're putting the same level of rigor in, in our planning and marketing as other uh, areas of the business does as well. So, you know, as we think about the challenge for the modern marketer, and there's a lot of conversation around modernize and, uh, and becoming more modern in our processes and approach, uh, marketing has uh, some pretty significant um, intersection points of how to bring everything together uh, and ensure the spending in terms of the value uh, that's delivered uh, is recognized and um, is used as a foundation for continued success. Marketing plans must demonstrate that the planning of activities align with the goals, but also contributes to attainment of sales and revenue, and um, that, that the expenses that are being utilized are well, uh, well worth it, frankly, and justified. So having good, accurate, and timely data um, that's shared and worked across the marketing team is essential. And frankly, we found in our research and my experience is there's way too much uh, silos of PowerPoints and spreadsheets and email um, that's putting different versions um, and everything gets confused. Te the teams in marketing don't have a common place to work together and ensure that they have the right tools for being successful. Now, we have to really uh, look at this closely because, you know, the competitive environment is critical. 
um, the pace of change, the opportunities, um, trying to market and get people's attention span um, is, is part of uh, all the kind of uh, challenges that marketeers have. And we have to start to look at kind of these, um, making sure that we're spending more time and being creative and driving results than worrying about the, t the tactics of, of who's doing what, how much budget they use to get a return on, on, on the investment. Um, and that's really the essential uh, elements of what marketing planning is all about. Um, and our research found that marketers are really dissatisfied with their ability to plan today. We're going to talk some more about that, but frankly, um, fewer than half of organizations actually participate in our benchmark um, said they're satisfied with their current process of creating marketing plans. And more than 40% said the marketing planning process is too slow and they have too few skilled resources uh, and readily available uh, uh, data to be able to support their planning needs. And then, of course, we'll talk more about that, and James will as well, is that, that our research found that technology is really inadequate to be able to support um, what they're trying to get accomplished. Um, so there's, there's a, a whole circle of challenges here to modernize our marketing efforts, make sure we're delivering results, and be able to support um, what our organizations expect from us. And um, that's at the core of really what I see as kind of transformational changes that are happening in marketing, where the, the marketeers that are the most successful are the ones that actually put their entire team uh, to working together uh, for driving the best results. And of course, that requires um, a little bit of work um, to, uh, in many cases, you know, retrofit um, the existing process uh, and, but then um, get people off uh, these individual silos of tracking and, and data and issues and really come together in a more unified approach um, because, frankly, unifying the plan, the budget, our resources, and the entire marketing organization is critical. And um, our research found that that is really the, the, the key objective that points to um, excellence in marketing. And organizations that are still um, doing kind of one-off types of spreadsheets, PowerPoints, uh, are actually creating more challenges for their marketing organization to be successful. So let's go ahead and, and, and talk about the first best practice. And so we conducted research last year, and we love doing research um, to really look at how organizations um, are performing. And we did that in the planning area and looking at, at uh, basically the, the planning activities of marketing. And um, we did that because we frankly see that this is a gap in how organizations um, are performing and that there's a criticality of now how to make sure the, the marketing plan is, bring, is coming together to business objectives, which is really uh, the first best practice, right? How do we get towards this alignment? How do we work to achieve the best possible results um, with the uh, budget and resources and capabilities um, of our marketing team. Now ensuring that our plans are linked together is critical because we've got to work better together in marketing and then be able to actually share and link together some of those results with other line of business areas as I mentioned earlier. And today in our research we found that only 3 out of 10 uh, said their marketing plan is relevant to how they actually operate. Um, so there's a lot of stale aspects of the marketing plan and issues um, that are not well managed um, and aren't able to be adjusted very easily, which then typically, at least in my experience and what I've seen in the marketing organizations, is that we get into a tactical response um, where we call conference calls and meetings and we spend too much time because we haven't just basically built our plan from the beginning and then have the ability to be able to update that and adjust it and communicate it. Um, our Research also found that just getting access to data is critical to be able to interact with a plan. And then fewer than one in four can drill into the details of the plan during a meeting. So if we're having a marketing meeting um, and we're bringing together the key, you know, the key team leaders and we all realize we've got to make adjustments, um, and as we just saw in the poll, um, making adjustments um, either as needed um, or on a monthly basis, that you know, we can't actually make adjustments. We've got to wait until the meeting's over, send somebody out, make some changes, send it back in, have another meeting, review it. We waste a significant amount of time by not having the ability to work with the plan dynamically as we're having the meeting and be able to adjust it and be successful. 
And um, in fact, our research we looked at it uh, a little more closely, and um, and most most organizations require hours or you know one or two days after the meetings to perform the analysis and make the adjustments. Um, and um, we found a third of organizations take a week or longer to update the plans after a meeting, um, which frankly is really kind of pathetic. Um, we we have had, have had so far in an ability to use uh, software to be able to support um, our marketing uh, processes and our, and our objectives that we've got to do better. Yeah, Mark, I think this is where from, uh, from our customer perspective, we work with uh, customers of all shapes and sizes, but the ones that perform the best uh, are the ones that really understand the top-down business level objectives and build that directly into the plan. And they look at things like their, their narratives or sales plays or, or uh, what their corporate objectives are first. And I think that's you know really what we encourage our customers to do as they jump into this is is you know how how am I trying to drive the business and, and certainly there's revenue goals but there's also non-revenue goals that show up in our in our customers building a brand establishing a reputation um, building different social channels whatever you're trying to do uh, we see that um, the organizations that plan effectively are the ones that start with the top down. And we did a webinar recently talking about the ROI dilemma and how difficult it is to plan from a, a campaign level, uh, uh, you know, a, a attribute revenue to a campaign level. It's an interesting topic as well. So you, you need to do that. You need to understand your investments and your spend, but you better be aligned to something. Uh, and so that's something we see our customers, the, the best performing companies and the one that wins the awards are the ones that look at frameworks and methodologies from the business objective and not just the tactic side. I think it's a great point. Yeah, no, absolutely, James. And I think that you know both you and I know that this even becomes more complicated as we have uh, marketing teams that are virtualized um, across time zones, across geographies. We have different priorities in certain geographies or for certain product lines. Um, so the reality of, of, of the ability to uh, align your plans, your business objectives, and be able to cascade and work across a uh, team across locations and responsibilities is essential. And this is where things really start to kind of uh, break apart fast if we don't have everybody working in a, in a common environment. Yeah, I definitely agree. Well, let's jump to the next one. Absolutely. So best practice number two, using scenarios to determine priorities. So, you know, um, the reality of how marketing works, as most of you know on today's call, is, is that uh, things change. Things change uh, quite rapidly. And as your org marketing organization gets larger and starts to move up and down, there's all kinds of scenarios to um, determine where is the best investment um, that needs to be made um, to align to these objectives we just talked about. And um, you know, and marketing planners need to be able to work with the complete timely data and be able to uh, work towards the objectives they're trying to achieve. Um, so, you know, as you look at a market organization, now the question is now how do we do some of this what if, this trade-off scenario planning, and how do we start to determine where changes need to be made in certain areas of the market organization, and how are you able to adjust that, uh, roll up the plan, see how it impacts the budget, and assess trade-offs and determine where, you know, where there needs to be, uh, you know, a better focus or basically uh, maybe to actually defocus on certain areas. So um, you know, our research found only three in ten said that their software could help assess trade-offs well or very well. Um, so it's really, you know, as you think about that, um, you know, seven out of ten um, are not able to do effective trade-off scenario planning today, um, which is just absolutely necessary um, because uh, there's no such thing as an annual marketing plan, and everybody just, just marches towards that uh, uh, towards that agreed plan. Um, things are changing. And um, we also found that 14% said they can explore every relevant scenario, and a fifth do not explore them at all. Um, so basically, if you're, if you're not able to actually assess these trade-offs, have the right software to be able to support it, you're at a significant disadvantage because you're not very agile. That means you're taking um, more time out of your team's uh, schedule to do meetings and discussions and, and analysis, and you're not able to do it uh, uh, rapidly. And, yeah, I think uh, it's again another one of those areas where I talked to a customer the other day who, who talked about um, their uh, last year in their, in their marketing planning and how important for, for them it was to have this ability to understand different scenarios because 
the back to survey poll question, it said that 25% uh, um, of people are something in that effect are planning on an as-needed basis. And so rather than having to do the entire plan again, what if I could just pull down a scenario saying, what if my budget increases by 10%? What impact does that have on spend and investment? But more importantly, what impact does that have on revenue? And we're going to talk a little bit more about revenue impact later. But I think that's, um, that's the reality of modern marketing is that the, the PowerPoint or the spreadsheet is, is, you know, is, is the one you plan at the beginning of the year, or beginning of the quarter, is out of date by the end of the first week. So you've got to be prepared for, for um for changes in marketing plan, it's always going to happen. I know myself. Just this week, I, you know, some some work changed in terms of a partner we were working with, and we had to had to change our plan. And rather than having to do the entire plan again, we can just simply um, adapt as we go. And we, we talk about agile marketing. This is a, this is how it shows up in a marketing planning environment from our from our customer perspective. Yeah, I completely agree, James. And you know, it's always one of those things too. You know, you, you know, you get that phone call. The middle of the month, and they say, you know, you got to reduce marketing spend this quarter by X percent, or you know, you're you're 10 days before the end of the quarter, and all of a sudden finance says, listen, we need to increase our spend. Uh, we're allocating out an extra five percent. You know, come up with some ideas about how to how you're going to use the money, but you only got 10 days to figure it out, right? So, you know, and, and where you're recognizing your 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 expenses in marketing and how you put plans together, you have to be able to move. Very, in a very quick and agile way, as you pointed out, um, and uh, most marketing organizations can't do that today. So let's talk about best practice number three. Um, best practice number three is um, is focused on using collaboration to establish alignment. And uh, today, um, I wish we all could, do, you know, in marketing, you know, have your leadership and all sit around a table and, and review things. But the reality is that we've virtualized our teams. And in many cases, um, you know, we come together um, part physically in meetings and, and part virtually. And we've got to find ways to have a common uh, view of our marketing plan, um, review scenarios, make decisions, and support that collaboration process that happens both, you know, up, up and down the organizational chart in marketing, um, but across teams as well. Um, but the key thing is be able to work together um, towards the common objectives. And um, our research found that fewer than half collaborate effectively or very effectively in the marketing planning. Um, so, um, you know, so we've got, you know, one out of every two organizations are just not able to collaborate effectively. And collaboration is not about just picking up a phone and talking or sending an email. It's actually working around the common plan and the objectives and understanding what we're trying to improve or change or make decisions against. And um, our, our research also found that you know 85 percent of companies that collaborate effectively also manage planning well. So there's a correlation in our research to those who actually collaborate uh, effectively. They also plan effectively, and this helps then bring together a focus towards uh, you know accomplishing the the mission that we have in marketing. I think the interesting part here, Mark, is we talk about collaboration. We often think about marketing within a silo. We, we collaborate with each other, but that's clearly not the reality of modern marketing. When our job is to be really driving revenue, not just activity from from a like from shares and leads perspective. So, sharing with uh, the ability to share with your uh, leadership team, your CEO, to get that uh, alignment there. Uh, your head of sales, your chief revenue officer, making sure that he understands or she understands how your spend and investments are aligned to their objectives and the results. Uh, your finance team, understanding how the buy budgets work uh, back and forth um, and how their inputs uh, impact your plan and how your plan impacts their uh, forecasting from a spend and, and revenue perspective. IT um, as well. And we also see collaboration with, uh, we, we do a lot of work with customers that have multi-tier distribution channels uh, in retail and CPG. And so um, sharing with your suppliers' uh, marketing teams uh, outside your organization is also something we see as well. So thinking not just about marketing as this function, but as, a, as an ecosystem of places that you want to work with has really been essential things like marketing development funds with partners. Uh, the more visibility you give into the plan, the more collaboration on the plan, the more alignment to the plan, uh, the more effective organizations that we work with have been. So I think it's a, 
it's important to think about the, the entire team and not just your team. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have to, you know, really um, be able to interact dynamically, work together, and as efficient as, as at all possible. Um, and as I mentioned, for you know, for marketing teams to work across you know time zones or or, or country boundaries, this becomes even more essential um, that we're actually working together. Well, great. That brings us back to the best practice number four, which is uh, adopting uh, purpose-built technology. And um, you know, sometimes it's not as clear where people just like, hey, it's quick, easy. You know, what's wrong with just using you know things like Microsoft Office and just throw this stuff together? You know, PDF it, throw it on the server. You know, share it around. Um, well, you know, marketing is not static, and you know, and it also is not a place where we want to have loosely coupled documents that represent how we actually operate. We've got to be more agile, as James and I just spoke about. And um, companies uh, have uh, started to realize this across all business areas that having purpose-built technology, especially technology that's built for planning, because it's not just about throwing up a dashboard and looking at some metrics about what happened last month in a campaign. This is about planning. It's about forward-looking perspectives. It's about actually bringing in objectives, linking our budget and our resources to really understand how we actually uh, are planning to perform and meet uh, our goals, and then how we actually take that and use metrics to identify where we have places for improvement and then what we communicate as well. And um, we found that over half, 55% of market organizations that use dedicated planning are able to explore these scenarios, are more agile, are able to make adjustments. And, um, and this is where you know, we found that marketing teams are now leading very rapidly to real, they realize this is critical. Um, and, um, and, and we found that there's, uh, there's quite a few. There's actually a third of organizations evaluating alternatives to their current approaches, and they realize that this is essential for um, getting uh, the entire marketing team to participate. Uh, because you know we, we spend a lot of money on having a, a great marketing team. There are a lot of cases we actually don't enable them to help participate in the planning process, provide feedback, input, um, and, and drive improvements. Um, and this is exactly what our research found is that you know, as we get more people involved, um, it's not about the, the person who can you know, uh, you know, do pivot tables in a spreadsheet. This is about planning process, having the goals. So things like usability are really critical. Um, our research found that uh, usability is, the, is a key, uh, is actually the top evaluation criteria for marketing planning software. And uh, to be able to do this properly, it's got to be cloud-based, right? We've got to be able to access and onboard new software without having to worry about installing things and, uh, and, and waiting for updates. Um, we've got to have software that's agile as well to be able to support our marketing needs. Yeah, Mark, this is where we you know, work with hundreds of customers. And it's always amazing to me that they've spent so much time investing in things like, well, recently CRM or supply chain management or HR systems or uh, a corporate uh, budgeting system, ERP system, yet their marketing team is trying to be self-sufficient so they deploy what they've learned, which is you know, PowerPoint or Excel to manage their marketing plan, which, which is fine to a certain level. Uh, but as you get more complex, if, you, if the expectations are more beyond what you spend and talk more about more what you drive in terms of impact and revenue, those, those tools just aren't effective anymore. So, you know, I think this, this need to think about marketing as a, this part science, and, and obviously we still have the art of marketing, uh, is really essential as a mar modern marketer and, and why it becomes really an imperative and not just a nice to have to put the you know, people, the processes, and the technology to make it effective. And so, you know, I think uh, it's exciting times for our industry around marketing performance management as we see uh, this investment really coming into the space. And, you know, I think the, uh, the impact of the, some of the research you've done and some of the things that we'll talk about you know, will make this a lot easier for people to comprehend and understand going forward uh, of how they can actually build a marketing plan, collaborate, and share um, the, uh, you know, how marketing is really driving the business. So I think this is a really important one to think about. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and in addition, that you know, we've got to have marketing planning that can operate across the entire market organization. It's not about having some you know sub you know uh, marketing planning that's done in in one area of your organization. 
we have to have something that can actually work and interrupt across your entire marketing team. And so, you know, just thinking that, you know, well, I'm going to go and use the plane that came with my, you know, my campaign planning tool, um, or I'm going to use um, some software that's not really aligned to how marketing operates, um, is going to really fall short, and that's what our research found. So it's critical to really be thinking comprehensively about how to make, uh, how to have the right marketing tools um, that actually can help us achieve you know, the goals that are set. That brings us to the next best practice five. Um, so measuring the impact of marketing investments. And, and I think everybody in marketing realizes this is important, right? Marketing is an expense. Companies look to make sure there's ways to articulate the value of that investment. And we, we're always um, asking um, our teams to be able to demonstrate um, what they've re what they've got from their investments, right? So, you know, whether or not it's a brand team, a campaign team, uh, content uh, digital marketing team, um, you know, whatever area, we're always asking, hey, you know, what, you know, how are we measuring success, and how do we make sure we're getting the right uh, return? And of course, as we as we do a better job to really bring together uh, the ways that we measure the impact of marketing. Um, the better that we're able as marketing executives to be able to articulate uh, the impact that we've delivered to the organization. Because it's not just about one particular area of marketing, it's collectively how are we actually performing and then uh, how does that actually link towards the goals that we set, where are places that we can make improvements, and then where do adjustments need to be made to budget. Maybe we need to reallocate budget uh, across teams based on, uh, based on priorities. And um, so our measuring revenue impact is, is, is something we, we looked at in our research, and it's, it's, it's poor in a fifth of marketing organizations. And um, for many, it's about um, looking at how do we do a better job of optimizing uh, our marketing spend. Uh, in fact, um, uh, that is an area that many organizations realize that they're just not able to um, you know, perform the tasks around optimizing marketing spend as part of their planning, be able to adjust the budget, um, be able to measure the impact. Because um, in the end, it's, you know, hey, we spent this much money. What was the benefits of that? Um, and we've got to make sure that we have marketing software um, where we can actually then uh, be able to um, have the metrics that best represent um, how that investment's actually operating. Um, and that's, you know, that's always been a, a challenge for many in marketing leadership is to have a common agreement about how we're defining success, what are the metrics, how do we link uh, budget to those metrics, and how we do that in a way that actually is, is seen by uh, the appropriate people in marketing um, so that um, they all know um, how their actions and their daily, weekly tasks impact um, you know, the, the value that's being expected um, from their activities. Mark, it's really disappointing to see that number about the marketing revenue impact uh, for it, and, and, you know, fifth of the organization. And from our perspective, it's, it's, you know, I, I have a lot of empathy for marketers as they try and understand how to be revenue-driven versus, uh, you know, investment-driven or, or, or uh, results-driven from a lead generation perspective. I think it, what we find, and we'll talk a bit more about it, 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 it's really difficult to do this, but it has to be done. Like, you have to have this... Uh, conversation about revenue, and and uh, you know we'll show you in a bit how we we work with our customers to do it. But why do you think it is it just because it's hard, or because marketing doesn't think that's their job? There's just so, I think it's a it's a matter of that in, in many organizations that they have uh, it's not easy to get the data collected together, uh, understand kind of the plan, the budget, having that unified view. In many cases, they're just not able to keep up. And keep up means keeping the, the data up to date because they're using silos of spreadsheets and PowerPoints and emailing back and forth. So a lot of the stuff is they just don't have the right software to be able to support the process. Number one, number two, they're just overwhelmed with so many things going on that you know they always mean to go back and update things, um, but they just run out of time, frankly. So that's kind yeah, of yeah, we see that too. It's, it's not that they don't know they don't need it. It's just they they can't make it the priority right now, which which is which you think is a mistake. You know, we think that now is the right time to be talking revenue, not in the future. Manage your investments for sure. Manage your programs for sure. 
but talk the language of the business. It's the only way you're going to get more budget and protect the budget you have. So I think this is a really important one as you think of as we, our customers we work with, thinking them, thinking with them on how they in, invest in this type of technology and this type of solution to help them understand the revenue impact. It's going to be critical for their company, their growth, their careers. So it's, uh, it, I think it's a great one to end on. Yeah, no, absolutely. Which really kind of leads me to the whole point of what we're talking about is really to modernize marketing, right? Is to have this unified view that we can actually get access to the information. We can work together. Um, we can actually take and focus on our real objectives in marketing, which is to is to you know grow you know you know grow our market share. Um, you know, ensure that we're um, delivering the best possible brand value. Uh, we're expanding out um, and reaching new customer opportunities. Um, and we've got to be able to measure our marketing plan's effect. And, um, and our research found that only 10% of marketing organizations said they can actually measure their marketing plan's effect on the rest of the company. Um, and 45% uh, they said they, oh, they got a general idea of the impact. And so we've got to really take this process more seriously. It represents the, the, the focus and the passion that we have in marketing. And if we're not able to actually have a dedicated approach to having a process and, a, and an application supported that represents the value of what we do in marketing, then it's kind of like, well, you know, we don't really care. You know, it's like anything else. You know, you got to really care about what you're doing. You got to be able to have the ability to have that unified plan and be able to actually manage marketing effectively requires us to have the right kind of tools for the job. And you know, we talked about that, but it's so essential. Because modernized marketing is not about you know putting out you know more streams of information via social media. Um, it's not about you know going and running you know campaigns and and uh, you know personalizing emails to people. Those are all just tactics of a broader marketing plan and how we actually need to be looking at strategically how we're achieving our objectives and and how do we use our budget the most effective way and to be able to change as needed to be able to support it. And so that kind of you know, really brings up to the five steps for marketing excellence. So how do we put this all to work, right? So first, we need to assess our performance through planning objectives. Look at what we're doing. Put our marketing organization in a mirror, and as a marketing leader and team leaders, figure out how well we're doing in this area. That will then get to the second step, which is identify areas where improvements have the largest impact. Because we can't fix everything, but we can actually start to identify the areas that can have the most improvement. And then with number three is track improvement by objectives to assess progress, right? So we can start putting objectives in place of areas where we need to do a better job in marketing planning. And number four, focus where you can optimize the revenue goals, right? So focus on where we can actually be smarter about how we use our budget resources as part of our plan to achieve those revenue goals that actually in many cases are some of the highest things that sales and finance might actually expect out of the organization, um, but are only part of the overall marketing mission. And number five is manage marketing to expected performance. And so, you know, this is critical because now, now we're talking about really moving up that level of maturity, focusing on, on excellence, and really driving the improvements that are actually necessary. And that kind of gets us to marketing planning really enables new potential, right? We, we've talked now over the last 20 minutes talking about some of the key best practices, things that, frankly, when I was CMO, I wish I had in place because I know how much time or extra hours every day had to be spent to try to coordinate and, and allocate budget, uh, make sure people the team understood why changes are happening. And we didn't spend enough time to really look in that forward-looking planning, coming up with ideas, how to grow markets, how to, how to really uh, communicate the success of, of the company and the products and services. Because that's really where marketing planning really brings that new opportunity for driving success every single day. Great. Thanks, Mark. I think uh, you've laid out a, a really good foundation that challenges marketers to think really about how we're driving the business and not just about the activities and tactics that we do. We didn't talk about a campaign. We didn't talk about a social campaign. We didn't talk about all, uh, any of that, um, those tactics in the last 20 minutes. We talked about how uh, as marketing as a function really needs to align to the business and how we can you know, think about it strategically and not just tactically. So um, we're going to just jump to a poll here to, to 
to wrap this up just to learn a bit more about what people are um, what, what they're doing. So, so uh, the question is about you know, the tools and software you're using for marketing planning enabled to, to optimize marketing spend. So how well do you do it today? I mean, there's lots of different ways to do it. You don't have to use our tool, but how well do your tools or software for marketing planning enable to you to optimize marketing spend? Really, the, I think the goal of every marketer is understanding uh, what's, what works, what doesn't, where do I invest, where do I de-invest, and knowing that the world is con continually changing is, is, uh, is part of this reality. So let's talk about this and, and give you a few more minutes, a few more seconds to respond here. All right, I'm going to I'm going to skip to the results. You can feel free to answer the qu questions here, but uh, you know, not a surprise, eh, Mark? That uh, um, that most people are feel doing pretty poorly at understanding how they optimize marketing spend. Is that uh, al aligned with some of your research? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we, we only found seven percent did it very well. Uh, looks like nobody here or today is doing it very well. We got a couple we've got some responses coming in, but um, most people are down at the lower part of the curve. Um, and some people just don't know, right? I mean, we've had our research, so it was almost 24, you know, 25% that didn't know how well they did because they just don't have any tools and, and they, they don't have any conversation about how well they do it. So absolutely. Yeah, here, here's, here's your research. I'll just pop it up there. It's, it's very much aligned. I think that, um, that it, it's fascinating to see you know, big organizations really have done a lot of work in understanding uh, their brand and their messaging and, and their, um, their um, programs that they're running, but not necessarily understanding the impact. So uh, we think huge opportunity, uh, huge environment uh, to, to grow into. And we're all learning together. And this is why I think um, you know, webinars like this and the, us working with our customers really understanding uh, how do we under, how do we drive modern marketing? How do we look at our business more effectively? And so, um, with that, I wanted to transition over to just a little talk about how we uh, work with our customers to to help people with their marketing planning. And so, I'm going to jump into a, a quick overview of Allocate. I'm not going to go into the details. Uh, you know, we can definitely follow up with you after the call. But if we take Mark's concepts around uh, planning and scenarios and revenue impact. Essentially, what uh, we work with our customers is to really understand what the challenges of individuals and teams within the, the marketing organizations are faced with. So, kind of the three main audiences that that we work with would be the CMO, understanding you know the uh, giving them the visibility into the business that they're looking for, uh, trying to track marketing ROI across objectives as you talked about programs, teams, segments, however they want to put their marketing program together. On the other side, field trade, corporate marketing, they're the ones that are running the activities and campaigns that are trying to drive that revenue uh, and, and understanding how they optimize their spend. And then from a marketing operations uh, team, really trying to understand, okay, can I provide the CMO, field and trade, corporate marketing, finance, IT, the chief revenue officer, CEO, all the access to information that they need to be effective from a planning perspective. So I think if we think about what modern marketers are trying to do, we need to think about not just the field team, uh, but also the CMO and also those other stakeholders. So what we, what we do with our customers is we've created this methodology that we call the, the path to marketing performance. And it's really thinking about your organization from two perspectives. Uh, one on the left-hand side, the investments do you plan to make. So uh, based on the corporate objectives, based on the new products I want to introduce, based on regions and segments, how do I plan to spend my money? Uh, and then on the other side is the return side, which is the uh, thinking about you know, what are the levels of tactics and leads and programs and revenue that need to be planned and driven in order to get to the holy grail of marketing, which we both talked about, which was this concept of revenue-driven marketing. So if you look at the left-hand side about investments, you want to set a target, build your plan, start to track your actuals so that you can start to forecast how much I'm planning to spend. From the return side, set a target, set a goal, uh, understand what the planned results are, then understand the actuals, uh, and then drive a for the forecast from a returns perspective. And if you do that, you start to bring together you know, this concept of the path to performance that we work with our customers on. Now, we're not going to get there right away, so what we do is give a bit of a step-rise approach. And if you think about the bottom of the pyramid, it being about planning. 
So all of the different planning that goes into place, very much what we've been talking about today. Understanding your business, your objectives, where you're going uh, to invest from both uh, from the investment side, but also the return side. Thinking about both your targets and your plans. So uh, we'll get into a, a couple more areas, but this is where things like what scenarios should you model in, what uh, type of investment programs you need to put in place. So from there, then we look at the left-hand side, which is where budgeting comes in. So I, I need to do budgeting. It's not optional. I can I need to think about how I'm spending money, what I'm spending it on, and then how much I've committed to spend, what's my actual spend, and driving the forecast side. So that's the, really what, where the investment uh, side comes in from a budget perspective, managing all of the different uh, uh, areas that I could spend money on. And then combining that on the other side with uh, the more the performance side, thinking about uh, all of the different sets of activities that I want to measure from, from my results whether that be leads or likes or shares or um, looking at your revenue, um, uh, your cascade marketing funnel as a, as a key element of understanding marketing qualified leads and sales accepted leads, uh, opportunities, closed deals, one lost, etc. All that information needs to flow into this system. So it can't just be your marketing systems. It's got to be things like your CRM systems. So if you do that, the next step is thinking about if you can manage your um, your investments on the one side, returns on the other, then you can really start to talk about return on investment. So whether that be your target return on investment, your planned return, your actual return based on those, not just the campaigns but the objectives, and again, the holy grail of can we forecast and predict return on investment. So I can ask for more money, I can change programs, and I can be more agile. So how to get there is a couple quick steps. One is you need to be able to work with your finance systems. That's where a lot of the corporate investment information lives. Um, not trying to replace those, but as Mark said, you need a purpose-built solution for marketing uh, planning uh, that connects to your fin corporate financial planning systems, and chances are you have one in place today. If you don't, you probably have a budget from a spreadsheet from your uh, finance team, your financial planning analysis team that you can plug into, the, into this plan. So you set the top-down targets. Next, you want to think about, as Mark talked about, a lot of the information is probably stored in a Word document or Excel or a PowerPoint or in someone's head. You've got to capture that information into this plan. Um, from there, next step is you need to be able to connect to where information lives, whether that be in your marketing resource management system, planning, or your uh, things like your purchase order system where the investments and, and uh, actual spend would come from. So you can't do this in a silo. You need to think about connecting to all the different ecosystem of where the information lives um, if you're going to understand the path to marketing performance. Next step, you need to be able to connect your ERP system, your finance system, uh, where a lot of the corporate financial information lives. Uh, and so you can really understand the budget for marketing and understanding what's being spent. And then you need to be able to connect to your marketing funnel. So whatever system you're using, whether it be a social system, a, a marketing automation system, your CRM system, that's where the performance data lives. And so what we, what we see for organizations that are effective is they often just start with managing their budgets, then they look at some of their planning, and then they drive performance. So what we do with our customers is really work through this process to say, here's, the, here's where you need to be spending uh, time, here's where the investments uh, are, are projected to happen, and here's where you can start to have the conversation around um, you know, driving the growth of the organization. So uh, we want to uh, put this framework together. We work with our customers to understand how this framework plays out for them because every customer is different. Some are trying to do planning and some are trying to do just manage their budgets and replace spreadsheets. Others are really more optimizing their business. So it's really a path. It's a it's a goal to get to the top of the, the uh, top of the pyramid, but not everyone starts there. So we're actually introducing some new technologies here, and I'm not going to get into too much detail, but really three new technologies, very much aligned to what Mark was talking about, about how mar modern marketers are planning in Alcadia, and really three interrelated technologies. One around scenario planning, so being able to say, here's what scenario A looks like, which is maybe my best case. My B is worst case, uh, C is my average case. So however I want to look at my marketing budget, I want to be able to plan scenarios from the very beginning. So thinking about putting an investment in. Is this 
something I have to have, nice to have, need to have, uh, and only or only put into place if we're going to invest in, say, opening up a new region. So I think getting marketers to step back and think, you know, what could happen over the next year and putting the scenarios in place. Then from there, thinking about strategic insights, and one of the things we really want to look at is, are you, are you running your business based on best practices, or are you just guessing on where you want to be spend money? So I know me as a CMO spend a lot of time thinking about where uh, our corporation is going in terms of corporate objectives, and then I cascade that down into my marketing plan. And in this, in this example, you're actually using a serious decisions framework, it's a really good partner of ours that can help uh, drive a lot of planning. We could use other methodologies like IDC, or you could customize your own. But this is where you want to be able to have that conversation with your executive saying, here's what we talked about spending, and here's what I'm actually spending, and here's where I'm doing well, and here's where I'm not. So for in the scenario where someone says, well, we need to go to a new event or we need to spend more on branding, you can say, well, that's great, but that's not aligned to the strategic object objectives of the organization. Should we change the strategic objectives or should we rethink what we're spending in marketing? And then ultimately moving on to the right-hand side about revenue impact, thinking about, okay, if, if my business continues to grow the way it has in the past, from, from a B2B perspective, but could also be from B2C, thinking about how my, uh, my revenue funnel actually works. You know, whether you're using a standard series methodology or you have your own custom methodology, we want to be able to take those uh, measures and ratios that us modern marketers understand and track that to your investment side, but also your results from your CRM system to put together uh, the view around marketing uh, and revenue impact. So that's really an overview of, of where we see allocating investing. And, and you know, just in the interest of time, I'm not going to go through a lot of these other uh, slides. We're going to send these slides out to you afterwards to talk about how we would look from a budget perspective and, and thinking about, as you look at this screen, thinking about your strategic alignment insights, um, where you might want to spend money in terms of different scenarios that we talked about, um, where you might want to look at things like strategic data about aligning your business to a st specific strategic plan. These are all of the things that will work with our customers to understand so that we can get to the point where I understand uh, that here's how my business actually works, here's the investment I'm going to make, here's how my lead funnel works, and then ultimately driving what all of us marketers want, which is, is that you know, path to, to revenue, being a revenue-driven marketer. So that was a really quick overview. Didn't intend to go into too much detail on this. Love to talk to you after the, the meeting on, on where um, marketing planning is going. But I think when we see presentations like this, we often are scared saying, I don't know where to start. Well, we, we think we have a great place to start, and we'd love to obviously talk about it after the call. But I think it's great that we had so many people show up today to, to talk about marketing planning. And I think we'll just, we'll just wrap it up, and maybe I'll turn it back to you, Mark, just to talk about you know, what, what a market, modern marketers need to do, uh, what they need to do next. You still there, Mark? Can I mute? Yeah, yeah, no, no, absolutely. No, it's absolutely. I'm just uh, you know, digesting. I think that you set the framework for what, uh, what companies can do, what's possible, because for many many uh, marketing professionals that, are, that I talk to, and and they ask about you know how do we do this? Can we you know? And they don't realize what's actually possible in marketing planning and how to bring this stuff into direct alignment. Um, so it's really important that you know that you know this this whole area around planning excellence is you know really frankly job one. And the the more rigor you put into your planning process. The better you're going to be in being more not just more efficient but more effective, and helping ensure that you know you're able to you know uh, you know work uh, and leverage the value of the team that you have and the budget that's been allocated to your organization to deliver the best results. And frankly, that's that's where all the stuff really you know the magic comes together when you've got you know a great team. Uh, excellent process and software that supports uh, your purpose 
um, and that you are able to articulate um, the value you get from your investments. Um, but just as importantly, you are able to be agile. And we talked about that whole trade-off, what-if scenario planning. That is really um, you know, super important in today's marketing world um, that we have got to be able to adjust and readjust and realign. And um, the faster that we are doing that, um, the smarter we are able to um, you know, the, the smarter approaches that we can take uh, for achieving this kind of excellence. Great. Thanks, thanks Mark. Thanks. I think it's a really good summary. We just have a few minutes left for questions. I wanted to just ask a question, and we're going to just pop on that last poll here about, um, you know, w one of the things we've seen really effective is just giving you a chance to talk to some of our experts here who've worked with hundreds of customers on um, just a, looking at a, a looking at your business, your marketing metrics, and your business review. Uh, if you want us to follow up with you after the call, we can absolutely do that. So I'll just leave this up on the screen for a second. And I'll just make sure the audience, if, they, if there's questions, you can answer on the, on the chat panel here. Um, Mark, can you talk a little bit more just about uh, the, the research you did and the white paper they were putting out and, and when people can expect that? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the, the research we did last year, um, underneath the banner of Next Generation Business Planning, look at the specific uh, line of business areas like marketing. So in fact, <laughs> the research that uh, your audience heard today is exclusively brought forward today, never been, never been uh, brought to market um, because it needs to be brought into this context that we've uh, spoken about. Um, and then you know, these best practices, you know, we're going to be um, bringing these best practices um, in, uh, in a research perspective um, that, uh, that we're doing here to help communicate these things, and it will be made available to everybody um, here uh, through Alcadia. So we're really looking forward to you know, you know, helping uh, you know, drive further education on this topic. Great. Yeah, I wanted to mention we're putting a, an e-book together as well that we call the Gold Medal uh, Platinum Marketing Planning, and the idea of that planning can be daunting sometimes. That they're thinking about if I have to align to every objective and every program and every campaign for every stakeholder can be uh, difficult. So we basically put a three-step, uh, three-tiered program together, talking about bronze, silver, and gold level uh, marketing planning. And I think it's it's a much more pragmatic way, very much aligned to your research to get started. And and I think one thing we just you know that we're laser focused on is let's get started. Let's not just continue the way marketing has been done in the past. Uh, the people that we've worked with um, are be the ones that are being recognized at major industry events. We're going to see a number of awards come up this year of some of the best performing marketing teams taking industry standard methodologies, understanding how to start small with just manage your budget better by replacing those spreadsheets. Start collaborating as, as phase one. Move up to phase two where you're really talking about investments and how the investments are making you more agile. And then the third level is, you know, as a marketer, can you really understand where you're driving, uh, driving revenue? And, and we really believe that's where um, you know, working with you, working with people like Mark, working with uh, your trusted advisors in the industry, I know there's some of them on the call today who put really good methodologies in place to make this happen. Uh, the time is now, and we're excited about being part of this uh, this industry for, for modern marketing. So, I think uh, we're pretty much at the end of the call today. It looks like we're right on time, and and uh, and we're going to. Uh, I think we're going to end it there. So, with that, Mark, I really appreciate you taking the time uh, to join us today, and um, and uh, you know we'll definitely be working with you in the future.